What's got you most excited now, Elon, in terms of all that you're building? You're doing so much. So let me just preface and contextualize who is watching this. Uh, our audience is largely wannabe entrepreneurs in India. Okay. Uh, really ambitious, really hungry, want to take the risk and build something. And I feel like all of us have so much to learn from you because you've done it so many times over in so many different domains. Yeah. Uh, so we will speak to them today and I will try and center all my questions in that direction so they can take advantage of this conversation and maybe start, take a chance and build something. Okay, sure. Um, Yeah, I guess the, the most important thing to do is just make useful products and services. Um, yeah. Um, Which one of all that all the products and services that you're building has got you most excited today? Well, I, I think that there's increasingly a, a convergence actually between SpaceX and Tesla and XAI. Um, in that if the future is um, solar powered AI satellites, which it pretty much needs to be in order to, um, in, or, in order to harness a non-trivial amount of the energy of the sun, you have to move to solar powered AI sa satellites in deep space, um, which somewhat is a confluence of Tesla expertise and SpaceX expertise, um, and uh, XAI on the, the AI front. So, I just feel like over time there's somewhat of a convergence there. Um, but all the companies are doing, doing great things. Um, very proud of the teams, they do great work. Um, so, we, you know, we're making great progress with Tesla on the autonomous driving. I don't know if you've tried the self driving. Mm -hmm. Have you tried it? I've tried it in the Waymo, not in the Tesla. Yeah, it's yeah. worth trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually have it here in, in, in yeah. Austin. So yeah, you can I'd like, love to try it. You can, you can literally just download the Tesla app. Yeah. And I and I think I think it's open to to, any, to anyone. Yeah. Definitely try it out. Let me, you know, you know how it goes. Um, but uh, you know, we've made a lot of progress with electric vehicles, with uh, battery packs and solar, and but and very much so with uh, self driving. So basically, real world AI. Um, Tesla is the world leader in, in real world AI. I would say so. Um, and then we're going to be making this robot Optimus, which is, you know, starting production hopefully summer next year, um, at scale. Um, and I think that's going to be pretty cool. That'll be like I think everyone's going to want their own personal C3PO R2D2, mm -hmm. you know, helper helper robot. Like it would be pretty cool. Um, and then SpaceX is doing great work with the Starlink program, you know, providing. Uh, low-cost, reliable uh, internet throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Hopefully India. So <laughs> we'd love to be yeah. operating in India. That would be great. We're operating in 150 different countries now with Starlink. Can you give me a bit about Starlink and how yeah. the tech works? Because somebody yeah. I was speaking to, uh, I don't know if you know this company called Meter out of San Francisco. Uh, they're trying to replace network engineers. But don't know it, no. um, So he was telling me about how in densely populated areas, Starlink works differently than it might be in a place with not as many people. Can you explain yeah. how it works? Yeah, so Starlink, um, there's several thousand satellites in low Earth orbit, and they're moving around 25 times the speed of sound um, in these, you know, they're zipping around the Earth, basically. And um, they're, uh, they're at an altitude of about 550 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Um, which is called you know, generally low Earth orbit. Um, because they're they're at low Earth orbit, they're, um, the latency is is low. Like the, the distance because the distance is is not that far compared to a geostationary satellite uh, thirty six thousand kilometers. Um, so you've you've got um, thousands of satellites providing uh, low latency, high speed internet uh, th throughout the world, and. Um, and they are interconnected as well. So there's, there are laser, laser links between the satellites, so it forms sort of a, a laser mesh, so that the, if, if, let's say, uh, fi let's say if, if cables are damaged or cut, like fiber cables, the satellites can communicate between each other um, and 
provide connectivity uh, even if uh, there's, there's a, uh, the cables are cut. So, for example, when the Red Sea cables w were cut, uh, I think a few months ago, mm -hmm. the satellite, the, the, the Starlink satellite network continued to function without a hitch. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's particularly helpful for disaster areas. So if, but if an area has been hit with uh, some kind of natural disaster, floods or fires or uh, earthquakes, that, that tends to damage the, the ground infrastructure. Uh, but the Starlink satellites still work. So, um, and generally, when, whenever there's some sort of natural disaster somewhere, we, we always provide people with free Starlink uh, internet connectivity. You know, we don't want to charge, we don't take advantage of a, a tragic situation. So, um, so always, you know, if, if there's natural disasters, we're like, okay, <laughs> it's, free, it's free during the natural disaster. You know, we don't, we don't want to say like, um, you know, put a paywall up while somebody's trying to get help. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wrong. Um, so, so that's it's 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 a very robust system. It, it's complementary to ground systems because uh, the satellite beams um, work best in uh, sparsely populated areas. Mm -hmm. um, but bec uh, because you, you've got a, you've got a satellite beam, it's a pretty big beam. So you have a, and you have a fixed number of users per beam. So uh, it tends to be very complementary to the ground-based cellular systems, because those are, those are very good in cities, because you've got these cell towers that are you know, only mm -hmm. a, a kilometer apart type of thing. But, uh, but, but, but cell towers tend to be inefficient in the countryside. So in, in uh, rural, rural areas is where you tend to have the worst internet because uh, it's very, very expensive and difficult to lay, to do all, these, do all the fiber optic cables, uh, or to have um, high bandwidth cellular towers. So Starlink is very complementary to the existing telecom companies. Um, it, it basically tends to serve the, serve the least served, which I think is, is good. Um, that's, um, Will that change tomorrow? Like today, as you explained, the, the beam is quite broad and it mm -hmm. can't work in a densely populated area with high buildings maybe. But can that change and tomorrow it becomes really efficient in a densely populated city where it is competitive with the local network providers? It, it's, it's unfortunately, the, the, so the, the physics don't allow for that. So mm. we're too far away. Um, so at, at 550 kilometers, and even if we try to reduce it, which about as low as we can go is about 350 kilometers, still very far away. You, you've, you've just, you can think of like a, like a flashlight, which is, you know, that flashlight's got a cone, and, and, and that, that cone is, is coming at, you know, today 550 kilometers. In the future, we'll try to get down to 350 kilometers. But we can't be something that's one kilometer away, which the cell tower, physics is not on our side here. Right. So it's not, it's not physically possible for us, for Starlink to serve uh, densely populated cities. Like, you can serve a little bit, maybe 1% of the population. And sometimes people get, you know, even in, in crowded cities, there might be, you know, no fiber link up their road. Like sometimes there's somebody's on a cul-de-sac or something, or in a, a place in, in cities, there's sometimes underserved areas for random reasons. And so Sonic can serve, like I said, maybe 1% or 2% of, of, of a densely populated city. Um, but it can be much more effective in, like I said, in rural areas where the internet connection is much worse. And often people either have sometimes no access to internet or it's extremely expensive or the quality is not very good. <laughs>